Ladies and gentlemen, whoever you are, wherever you're from, we're glad you can join us. Welcome to the ULAW Campus Series. We're finally into the Elite Eight, and we've got one heck of an upset storyline matchup for you. It's number 15, George Mason, against number 7, UT Austin. Hi, everyone. I am Daniel Degon Gonzalez, and with me, bringing the color to the casting, is going to be Seamus. How's it going, Seamus? It's going great, Degon. And uh, for those be aware, both Degon and I, we're casters, will be as unbiased as we possibly can, but we have a little bit of skin in the game. George Mason University from Virginia, you know, my alma mater was UVA, you're still going to Virginia Tech if I'm not mistaken, so <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing what the uh, the underdogs from Virginia can do. I am not, but I am about five minutes away from the George Mason University campus, so. All right, just yeah. kidding, forget <laughs> that. I don't know my casters as well. well. It's all right. It's all right. Certainly. Yeah. You're living in Nova, so you're obviously up there in DMU. But uh, UT Austin, I mean, Texas has been a powerhouse in terms of League of Legends and all collegiate sports since basically, you know, Lone Star Clash in 2012. Uh, so that's definitely, that's quite a pedigree. They made it into the top four of the Southern Region last year, and they definitely don't want to let that tradition stop here. Absolutely not. You can't think about collegiate esports without bringing up TESPA. TESPA being spawned in Texas. Uh, I believe it's Texas a but still, Texas a hotbed for League of Legends talent. So with that, we have our best of three coming up, the first Elite Eight matchup in all of you all. So here we are, you guys stay up late, crack open your five hour energy. We're gonna hop right into the game and catch you guys up as we get into it. So looking at it, we have our bands going right now. We have University of Texas, on the blue side and uh, uh, George Mason University, the Patriots on the red side. Bands coming out, Lee Sin, Rexai, and Oriana getting knocked out here on the side of Texas, waiting for that last band from George Mason. But so far, the first two were Zach and Rise. And it's looking like the jungle priority is getting knocked out pretty hard. Last band gonna be Malzahar here. Yeah, so potentially mid and jungle bands, potentially a support band taking away the Malzahar. Now, University of Texas with the first pick priority. Nothing too surprising. I mean, maybe the Zach or the Oriana as bands are concerned. But honestly, I think most of these champions have been banned before. And it's something that uh, people are pretty used to. That being said, though, you know, there's currently so many strong, viable champions in the game. And we are using the three-ban format. So strong jungler like Graves is left open. And they insta-lock. And wow, the rebuttal just as fast. So these guys are picking their champions pretty quick. Yep, the little Blanc was left open. Graves, still a very viable jungle, especially with the le lethality, even through the lethality nerfs. Uh, Graves still up there just consensusly uh, by most experts. And something that is left up in the jungle is Kha'Zix. So it does seem like there was a little bit of a trade there. So getting Shen and LeBlanc to get through on that first couple of picks seems like a big deal here for George Mason. Next couple of picks for University of Texas is Karma and Varus. So there's your bot lane right there. Lots of poke. Varus, top tier 80 carry. Jin is in the picture, but Varus definitely number one. Yeah, Varus, one of the strongest AD carries, has been for quite a while. Lethality had a slight buff, but it's go-to for modern AD carries as of right now. And I'm curious about, honestly, we, we don't talk about hoverovers too often, but Kondo with his Ash. Now, that would be so much engaged if they had the Enchanted Crystal Arrow on top of the Shen and the LeBlanc diving support there. I wonder if they're actually going to go for it, because that's honestly a pretty strong answer in the bot lane. Yeah, it looks like a very, very hard engaged team composition coming out of the side of George Mason. Ash, one of the more top played champions in Kondo's pool. Kondo also a pocket pick, uh, Draven. Uh, it's his most played this season. And also one of the reasons why you don't see him picking up Jin. 21 games played this season, 24 win percentage. So not very, that's not even one fourth right here <laughs> Oof, if my math's correct. Egon, so. <laughs> putting the man on blast. Yeah, just a, a little early, you know, reach out there. So Kondo, just going to stick with the Ash. It looks like most of his games have been played on Ash in their uh, scrim. So it looks like it will continue here. Nami uh, picked up by Route. And if we're talking about George Mason, you're looking on this. The, their playmakers here. I'm looking in the top lane with Ion and with uh, Route. In games that they lost, Ion and Route have had the highest KDAs. I think 
they lost a game earlier this season and Ion had like a 3.3 KDA. So he was on point on top in wins. He's always around six, if not higher. So I am wow. getting his preference going to be on that Shen Timo being hovered. Great. So on the opposite side, last two <laughs> picks coming in, it's going to be Nautilus and Victor coming in Nautilus and Victor. So Nautilus could be going a lot of, where's Nautilus going top lane. There we go. Sorry. Top, top lane, yep. Nautilus, Victor in the mid lane. Yeah, so between the Victor, the Nautilus, the Varus, the Graves, the team fighting potential right now from UT Austin is pretty fierce. I'm curious to see what GMU is going to do to deal with it. Now, you mentioned Rout and how he's one of the uh, ace players for GMU. Degon, before when we were looking at the champions and or the, the players and their names, it said Rout, as in no apostrophe E. But now that I'm actually looking at it, it says <laughs> Rout with apostrophe E. Now, I'm wondering... Is that route? Is that root? Is that route? Is that route? So many R questions. Rote could be rote. Rote, yeah. I don't know if any of you guys from GMU are. In the <laughs> Let I us know how to pronounce know. that. But absolutely, uh, the Elise lock in just kind of cements this sort of pick composition. It's a lot of dive. It's a lot of potential crowd control, and they can certainly blow uh, any vulnerable squishy up. But I would say, in terms of straight five v five team fighting. Definitely an edge over to UT Austin. Yeah, uh, we got to see at the IEM meta a lot of Elise coming out of the Asian teams. Then once it translated over back to Europe and North America this week, definitely played and picked up. So Firefly going to be picking that one up. Firefly, the highest rated player on this team for George Mason, uh, a challenger level player. But also George Mason has the biggest variance. Kondo is Diamond 4. So you got a challenger Diamond 4 and then a little bit of in between there, I think one Master and a couple Diamond 1s. And then over at UT, everyone on point Master, Diamond, and 1. I believe that's that's what they have going on there let's go ahead and break down how these teams want to fight so if you're if you're looking at ut you got your quintessential team fight matchup how do they want to go about finding those team fights well the nice thing with the composition that ut austin has traditional way to engage but on the other hand they also have the virus ultimate to go for and they also can boost their entire team with the karma if they so choose so a lot of different options there uh, certainly, variance makes it much, much simpler for a team to fight in not only a pick situation, but also a straight 5v5 team fight. Uh, and like I mentioned before, between Elise Cocoon, you know, the Enchanted Crystal Arrow, GMU is definitely going to be going more for picks, try to make plays off of rotations and play for objectives. Yep. Definitely, definitely. So I think it's really exciting to see these two different styles, and it, it seems pretty clear what they want to do. One team wants to go around objectives and get the fights on their terms. The other one wants to engage the fight immediately, right? So I'm really excited to see aggressive play out of both teams and have them dance around. So while we have a little bit of time, I just wanted to go through both teams' journey here just so far. So we're at the round of eight. Both teams... Um, have already played a matchup. Uh, we'll start with UT Austin on the blue side. They went 5-0 and in the regular season, never dropped a single game, not even a set, but a game untouched, unscathed uh, on their way to a perfect record in the regular season. To In the South 7 bracket, they ended up uh, moving on with UNC into the next, into the bracket stage. In there, they get a bye, and then in their round of 16, the Sweet 16, they face one of their nemesis is here, uh, Texas Tech. So talking about CSL last year, college Star League last, or collegiate Star League last year, uh, Texas Tech knocks out UT in the round of four last year. So a lot of bad blood in that game. And talking with the players from the University of Texas, uh, they have a full roster returning except perfect in the support role. So getting that matchup and then defeating Texas Tech two to one Big, big deal for that team moving on through to this round. George Mason, on the other hand, will be playing the underdog role. They had a huge, huge upset after a 4-1 and one regular season. Their only loss coming to forfeit to UT San Antonio, who just played earlier in the stream. And they had a huge upset against UT, um, UT Dallas. So University mm -hmm. of Dallas and University of Dallas, I believe, was the second seed in the bracket. That's why George Mason is 15th. They were able to go ahead and work their way through and 
get a huge win after losing that first game. So we'll get to see if they're going to be able to ride the momentum into this matchup with the Longhorns. So before we hop right into the rift, huge shout out to our sponsors. So first things first, thanks so much to Band Gaming, the primary social app of the Collegiate Star League with a ton of features, boards, calendar functions, polls, and chat. Hit them up at the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store, band.us slash home. Twitch.tv, thank you so much, Twitch, again, for your continued support of the collegiate scene. We wouldn't be able to do it without you. The largest gaming platform in the world. Thank you, Twitch. And lastly, Azus, thank you so much for our peripherals. And it does look like we are finally into the rift, real quick. Yeah, those uh, updated login screen, we just load in so much faster now, we don't break anymore. But one thing I want to point yes, GMU is technically the underdog in terms of seeding, but the loss that they have uh, it was a a forfeit. It was a DQ. It wasn't actually a game that they played, and they are one of the to MMR Day. across all the teams. So, yeah, they're the underdogs, and they're sort of running the Texas gauntlet if they want to continue moving forward into playoffs, but they're definitely no slouches. Nope, no slouches at all, and we'll definitely get to see the Patriots flex their muscles against the Longhorns. And with that, while we're in, and we see the teams lined up in the line of scrimmage, so not a lot of action going on, let's run down these rosters. On the blue side, University of Texas, 5-0, and oh, number one seed out of the South 7 region. It's going to be 50 Shades of Kappa in the top lane. Vincent in the jungle, UT Primate in the mid lane, Railgun at 80 carry, and perfect at support. And on the other side, <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting the uh, perfect the red team. George Mason University, Ionan, I Ion, Ionan. However, we'll pronounce it. Rocking that shit in the top lane. Firefly Elise in the Rute, aka Route, aka LeBlanc in the mid lane. Condo Ash, Aiden Carey, and then Alex as the Nami supports. All right, so a little oh, bit of early in yeah. raid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of junglers have been starting the Raptor camps, and it does look like Firefly is going to be forced out just on sheer numbers. Kappa and Vincent helping out with Primate. Primate's going to lose some, maybe lose some minions in the mid lane, but it doesn't matter. Firefly not going to get too much from the camp. We'll pick up three small minions, but the big Raptor will be heading on over to Vincent. So very aggressive play after a sedentary minute and 30 seconds. Well, it was really smart that UT Austin, they stayed in the brush as a three stack, just in case any aggression came out from GMU because they were all clumped together and enabled them to into the enemy jungle without really being contested. And then in that 3v3, you know, the Raptors were started. There's really no way you can fight that. And now Elise is certainly going to be behind in terms of the experience. That being said, though, Elise is one of the better junglers when it comes to actually being counter ganked simply because of her sustain and jungle clear uh, innately in her kit. Still, Vincent on this Graves does have the lead, and I'm curious to see how far he can push that, because Graves is definitely a powerful early game jungler. Yep, definitely. Lay here, just seeing the world of tanks in the top lane. Fifty Shades of Kappa and oh, Ion. Yeah. I'm going to go with Ion until we get corrected. Ion is kind of taking it to the face. Fifty Shades of Kappa really doing a lot of damage, but missed out on a decent amount of CS, so we'll get to see if that translates into a short gold lead for Ion here. Yeah, I'm curious to see if we... uh continuously have the directed camera adventures up that was like all the damage they did. but to be honest between a nautilus and a shen lane i don't expect there to be too many kills there mid lane though potential for the kill there roots actually taking a lot of damage is able to trade some back with that leblanco so nice damage there but uh needs to be careful as until level six i would say victor could definitely poke out leblanc if he's not careful not careful indeed, and I, I'm really interested in the fact that LeBlanc had that open lane after Primate uh, went ahead, helped with the jungle invade, and did not get punished by missing any CS. I think Rote could have pushed the lane a little bit harder and possibly led Primate into missing some CS, but either way, it's going to be an early tactical lead for the side of UT Austin. First game coming in. Doesn't seem like the chain is going to be enough. As Victor was able to get under his turret for safety. Ionan's actually been, uh, Ionan's been taking quite a bit of damage to this top. 
Yeah, he is kind of going back and forth right now. A little bit of trading, but I am now level four. Has the level advantage. Was able to get some damage down. Rote going in. <laughs> We, we we need we need the actual correction. <laughs> we, yeah, we correction need clarification. <laughs> Boy, we're gonna have way too much fun. I own Rote and perfect. <laughs> and fifty shades of Kappa. Fifty shades that's, of Kappa. That the, might turn into something else later. Acc Acclaim novel, right? That's a yes. kids novel. Absolutely for children. But here comes Firefly, letting fifty Ooh. shades of Kappa know that he's going to bedtime. Early kill heading on over for George Mason, but now a little bit of trading. Nice bubble landing on a rail gun, and now a little bit of retreat from Kondo. Early heal. Interesting. A little trade going back and forth. There's a lot of minions on the side of University of Texas doing 15 damage at a time onto the bot lane of George Mason. Another bubble landing, and Alex really wants to win this trade. Kondo with the sidestep. Nice sidestep. Will dodge the damage, a little bit of trading going back and forth, but overall, health bars going down. Teleport coming in from Ion. Great flash away from Railgun. Ion not able to get the taunt down. That would have surely been a kill on the Railgun. Solid mm. play there from both teams. Yeah, really nice flash away, and now I O N. Oh, hold on. Firefly? Team? Team, please? Good bye, Firefly. Firefly. Yeah. And down comes the spider, flash away, keeps him alive, and Rote, giving the right route away for Flyerfly. And looks like he's going to be safe. Really nice there from Root to protect Firefly, making sure that uh, he doesn't get caught out there. That was really impressive, actually, that you, T. Austin, was just able to jump on the Elise there and try to catch him out. Nearly had the damage, but one thing I want to go back to is the bottom lane fight, where I own it. Hold on. Hold on, Rote, about to go Ooh. in. Nice right. cleanse there from Primate, but good aggression coming out of Rote. Yeah, oh, okay, LeBanc's fine. The Shen used his TP, but he has ultimate available very shortly. Everyone's at level five, level six, so he's gonna be able to use his teleport. And it's okay if you're playing Shen and waste TP to try and make a play happen in bot lane. Of course, we saw the reaction from Railgun. He was able to flash away and nicely done, and uh, GMU wasn't able to secure an advantage there. That's something right. to look forward to because GMU has so many global ultimates right now that they can put a lot of pressure around the map. Yep, and if you just get any short little lead here, I really want to see the level six out of Kondo because once you have that enchanted crystal arrow coming out of Kondo, it's going to be go time for the whole roster of George Mason. Uh, so, and with exactly. Ion able to continue to match pressure and TP is currently down for 50 shades of Kappa, it could be very difficult times ahead for University of Texas Austin. That being said, though, Nautilus has a lot of crowd control to try and negate that ultimate. As the tanks continue that legendary wet noodle fight up there in the top lane. No kills over just yet. So here at the 7 minute 30 second mark, it is a... About a 300 gold lead, that early kill for George Mason manifesting itself here in the gold lead. But one big thing that's happening right now that isn't very fair is actually this gank is coming first. Vincent coming in. Nice ult from Nautilus. Flash away from Ion. Will he be able to get away? No, he won't. Collateral damage. Mm. See you later. Yeah, that's going to be an easy gank. That flash there from Ion at the very end was... Probably not the right call. He could have potentially flashed ahead of time to get away from the Nautilus. But uh, it does seem as if the client is stuttering a little bit, so we do apologize for that. But yeah, well, Degon, I... he, he could have maybe flashed away the crowd control, or at least try and delay it and get away earlier. But flashing at the very end there meant that Vincent and Fifty Shades of Kappa, they could secure the kill without using summoners of their own. And even though, that being said, the top lane did result in a kill, and they're trying to get that turret... We do see movement from Firefly. Actually, we don't really see movement from Firefly right now because the client. We don't see anything. But wow. uh, he's he's trying to answer in the ball lane. Let's see how he does. Burrito, also, I please can confirm it is I O N. I O N. I O N Apple to I O N. I O N. So thank you to Twitch Chat. Yep. Please get us an update on to Rote confirm. Rote Route Roots <laughs> name there. All right, we got to pause. Yeah, there it is little bit a huge lag spike coming out so we're gonna go ahead and flip on our idle screen real quick until we get that figured out uh seems like route disconnected and we're gonna go ahead and take a quick second to figure 
that one out. But in the meantime, we can continue to talk about these teams and these schools, both schools, public schools, UT Austin, obviously one of the biggest and best, I'll go ahead and say it, one of the biggest and best public schools <laughs> in America. Uh, obviously not only greatly known through sports, but also what they do in the public sector as well. Had a buddy of mine, uh, our drum major from high school, went to UT Austin, graduated from UT Austin, now works at UT Austin as a graduate life uh, assistant there. Um, He's a George life Mason. assistant? Yeah, he's graduate life assistant. That's, oh. that's the title. Okay. And... <laughs> uh, for for a second, I, I heard you just said, had said graduate, and then I thought you said graduate comma life assistant. And I was like, oh man. Oh, graduate what's life, life assistant. What's a, what's a life assistant? Right, right. That makes sense. <laughs> and on the opposite side, there, George Mason, huge commuter school in mm -hmm. Northern Virginia. Obviously, super well known for their Final Four run in 2000 and. <laughs> Oh, help me. 2012, I think. No, it's older than that. I, I think it's like 2000 and really five. George Mason. George Mason. Are you going to Google it right now, Deacon? Maybe. If you Google it and it says 2012 or 2011. 2006. Let's George Mason. Really? Final Four, 2006. Yep. Led by Tony Skin and my what? man Gabe Norwood. It was Norwood. that long ago? It was that long ago. That was the last time we were relevant as a place in America. Oh. In Northern Dang. Virginia. How the time flies. All right, yeah. well, definitely yeah, I don't follow too much college ball. But yeah, GMU, honestly, GMU, like, compare the pedigree of UT versus GMU. GMU is a relatively new school, if I'm not mistaken. It started in, like, the 70s, um, yep. which is kind of rare to see universities come up and flourish as George Mason has done. But it's one of the quickest rising schools in terms of success. Uh, I think it was on US News rankings. But again... Don't actually quote me on that. I, I saw those rankings like five or six years ago when I was looking <laughs> to apply to colleges. So uh, those might those might be a little bit outdated, like March Madness bracket, but slightly yeah, outdated. Slightly outdated. New schools. It's like the young versus the wise, but both of them are top competitors in turn competitors in terms of sports, kind of academics certainly, and now League of Legends. Definitely now League of Legends, and just. Take, take this in real quick, just student-wise, just how big each school is. George Mason has a commuter school, lives pretty much in uh, Fairfax, Virginia, Fairfax City. It's the, I think it's the, one of the top five richest counties in America per capita. Yep, I would uh, that. It, um, 33, 34,000 students. On the opposite side, UT Austin, they almost have one and a half times more students. 51,000 students over at UT Austin. Just huge, huge schools here. And we've casted some of these smaller schools. So really excited to be casting a big matchup uh, between these two teams. Yeah, absolutely. That being said, though, where, where's the support, Degon? I mean, obviously, right now we're, we're at an unfortunate lull in the action of a Twitch chat. I better I better see some kappas and, and kappa prides for your for your players here. Seriously though, I mean GMU versus UT Austin is probably one of the larger matchups in terms of the South simply because of the results that both of these teams have had, uh, and then the pedigree of the Texas teams as well. Honestly, the Texas region as a whole, the state has kind of been the dominator when it comes to collegiate esports, uh, typically in the South. But that's that's. A little bit due to geography and how many people actually live in Texas. Now they have potentially it's also something under the water, but I don't. I don't really know. I've never been to Texas myself, unfortunately. I disagree. I, I think that the the fact that U, UT and Texas A and M and all of the Texas schools have kind of gotten together to form TESPA uh, is is a huge thing. It, it could have been done anywhere, but the fact that it was done in UT shows how tight-knit that's just a hotbed mm -hmm. for League of Legends talent and just kind of esports in general. So solid stuff there. Had a uh, We had a reconnect and a, a disconnect again. Uh, Rauch is having a little bit of <laughs> lag issues right now, and they're still working through it. Um, it both might teams be are an internet problem. He, uh, he might need to reroute it. But in... All right, that was a pretty bad film. I'm setting oh. it five minutes into this. Hey, I can confirm or root so it's literally just the word i don't know why he had a little apostrophe e schwa thingy but oh well. anyway 
Anyway, so I own in the top lane root. So it's not I O N. It's I. Yeah, so someone trolled me, guys. I trust Twitch chat. That's I, I trust your you own guys. Ball. No, dude, this is. Uh, I want to trust Twitch chat. D gone. Anyway, uh, looks like we're we're on pause and immediately into a bit of a lag. Yeah, my client froze again. So hopefully, hopefully that's only temporary, and the pause maybe takes a little bit to jumpstart. I mean, it's pretty cool that the colors are on. Colors are back on in the pause. There we go, an auto attack, two auto attacks. We're back into the game. University of Texas, and now look at this. Firefly on the wrong side of the map. Railgun getting caught out. A little bit more lag. Dash in, there's the stun. Here comes the Enchanted Arrow, doesn't matter. Firefly picks up that kill. What a tough place to come back from a start. Either way, that kill gets traded, and University of Texas really wants to get this top tower. Here comes Route. Route coming in, putting oh. down damage. The tower will go down, but 50 Shades of Kappa will be punished. There it is, there's the punishment. And the tower is traded back on the bottom side of the map. Overall, a win for George Mason, but not as big as they would like because first tower gold goes over to University of Texas. Nautilus taking a nap, uh, and we see the bot lane turret equalized. So turrets traded, and overall, this is by far an objective lead for GMU, because not only did they get the kill the top, they also got the kill in the bottom lane. They're going to get the turret, and now they're going to get the Cloud Drake. So that pushes their goal lead. I mean, it's just a little bit higher than it was about 30 seconds ago, but the objective lead and the potential to snowball here is going to be pretty big. And with that play there, you you got to see the, the potential of this team composition on the side of George Mason. Firefly was the one that started this one up, but it could have been any any number of things you could put it on route you could put it on con uh, you can put it on condo you could wait for the enchanted crystal arrow to come in you mm -hmm. could wait for the tidal wave to come in there are so many ways for this george mason team to initiate on the longhorns that the university of texas has to be aware of where they are and where the other teams are and make sure vision across the map is vital and here's the interesting thing too now because it's a cloud drake actually generally considered one of the weaker drakes it works really well for their comp because you get the 25 movement speed bonus out of combat and that's essentially a pair of boots right there and looking at the comp they have degun they want to go around making objective plays denying vision catching the enemy off guard they're going to be able to straight out rotate teams if it comes to it with that cloud drake and that's i mean right now we see a trade going on later in the game that cloud drake might be really important but as of right now, we see Ion up here already, and Route is coming around. They could probably defend it. There's an arrow coming by the side, too. There is an arrow coming down, and ooh, it barely misses Vincent. I think Route stepping on the ward gets caught out. Now he's getting blown to bits. Vincent taking that one down. Teleport coming in from Nautilus, and it looks like it's going to be just a tower trade by these two, or maybe not. Ion in a little bit of trouble, trying to get himself out. Going to be snared up by Karma. Flash forward, going to lead to a kill here. It's Vincent on a killing spree, going crazy here. Three to three, and it doesn't look like University of Texas is done. Let me see the power of Graves when it comes to pushing turrets here with the virus as well. Four members, that's not something that the members of G expected in this bottom lane. And as a result, actually, it's only one for two trade and two over. So just as quickly as they found the lead, now GMU find themselves without it. UT Austin trying to make a play. Oh, another great flash from Primeape. Io not able to find the taunt. Tidal Wave not going to land on anyone either. And so Crisis averted. UT Austin with the Fancy Foot doing the do -si do evading all of the damage coming in. Nice long-range arrow from Varus going to deal some nice damage. Bubble going to stop a little bit of the aggression. Good play there by Alex, but UT Austin now has priority in the mid lane. Yeah, let's see how they actually do here. The wave clear isn't super great just yet because uh, Ashton and Blanc haven't leveled up their abilities all the way, but there is a two-man squad coming around the side. Bubble not going to land. The Cocoon does land on a perfect. Ion going in, but he's all alone, but he's going to be okay. Kondo picks up Railgun. Trade kill by Vincent. He's going to get another one. Route goes in, gets snared up. It's a double kill. The collateral damage is more than enough. Route with the snare over the wall. Great laser coming out of Primeape. Over the wall. No vision. Picks up the kill. Solid, solid fight. It's going to be a three for one. GMU were too low to try and make that happen. It's good to see teams try to go for these aggressive plays, but it comes back to bite them in the ass as Graves was left 
uninhibited that entire team fight and just so much damage coming out of these UT members. Oh boy, you're looking at a 5-0 and 1 Graves, not even 13 minutes into the game. He's also out farming nearly every single laner. Digon, this is going to be quite a difficult position that George Mason has found themselves in. And I mean, it's early, but the potential from Vincent to snowball here, that is not good if you are a fan of GMU. Not quite yet. The hard engage is still there. It's a 3,000 gold lead, but like you said, not a lot of wave clear on this side of the George Mason squad. We missed that during champ select, and you can see the power of University of Texas's team composition right there. Varus able to snipe away the minions. Graves doing damage in an AoE fashion. Primeape able to use his laser to clear things out, so solid, solid wave clearing can't be answered. That might be the, uh, the way in, the death ray just really clearing things out. Oh yeah, besides simply the wave clear, it also just provides so much siege. You know, you can just go poke, and if you land one virus Q or one laser from Victor, that later in the game, that'll chunk a squishy down to two thirds half HP. Even this early into the game, we see it doing about 200 to 400 damage, which is enough to avert any sort of defense from these squishy carries. Now, Ion apparently is the proper way to pronounce him. In the top lane, has a large wave to deal with, and there is a dragon up in about a minute. It's going to be the Fire Drake. So definitely a valuable objective to contest. And you got to feel that the Longhorns with the 4,000 goalie at this point are pretty comfortable enough to just go for that when it comes up. Oh, absolutely. It seems that both teams are jockeying for position, but UT Austin really feeling comfortable with the way the map is set up. You have a ton of wards on the top side of the map. You've got a Shen that's being shoved into tower. He does have Stand United, which will be helpful in the next team fight. But, um, you know, you're the team that wants to engage on the other team. If they're already there, vision set up, it's very difficult. You saw University of Texas already dodge out multiple forms of initiation earlier in the team fight around the river bush, and it doesn't look like they're not going to be able to do it again. Double negative. <laughs> <laughs> I like all this vision that's being set up by the blue side by UC Austin. Oh, as soon as I say that, Alex goes ahead and clears a couple of wards out. Smart to deny that vision. But yeah, not only on the bottom side of the uh, map, but also the top red buff, there's a couple of blue wards potentially trying to make play happen there in a few moments. For now, though, all eyes on the Infernal Drake as it has respawned. Or I should say spawned for the first time this game. And GMU because they found that first dragon. Oh, arrow. There's hard engage. Primate uses an early cleanse. Stand United not going to land and do too much. Little bit of a hectic fight. Ione goes in and he's going 5v1. He's trying to walk his way out. University of Texas has other ideas. Alex in a little bit of trouble. Dredgeline going to knock him up. There's a long hook there by Route. Route going to get away. And it's a little bit of a freeze here. We're not exactly sure what's going to happen. I believe Vincent is about to blow his face off. Not exactly sure. To be continued. To be continued. I can't hold this voice that much longer. Firefly is on the corner trying to flank. Alex waiting in the middle does not have the bubble because he was forced to walk himself out of there earlier. Well, uh, there it is. Okay, there it is. There's a double kill. End of the line spells the end of route. He went to definitely a dead end. And another lag spike is going to cause another pause here. What a fight! It, it looked like it was going to be initiated first there by Ione, with Route going in on LeBlanc, but then he just got stunned right there. <laughs> yeah, and that's a little bit unfortunate when you're trying to make a play, and... Looking at the items, really, Degon, there's not... There's not enough damage right now for a quick assassination, and there isn't enough item... There aren't enough items on the Shen to try and be a really strong frontline tank which makes it pretty hard for GMU to get anything done. That being said, you can't deny the fact that, you know, poor internet also obviously makes it harder to get things done. And... Cox. It looks like we're back in the game and yeah. Cox Cable. To all you internet providers out there, uh, except... Um... Except, I don't know. Uh, any of them. What a struggle right now. Yeah, this has been interesting. So... Fire Drake over to UT Austin. They're going to be able to answer the dragons and 
with such an impactful one too that's gonna make team fighting that much harder for the members of gmu you know when we were talking about uh in picks and bands about the different types of styles and their compositions especially after losing an advantage i would definitely think that gmu has to come back by making single champion picks clear some vision out you know land a good taunt find the support nail with an arrow or cocoon and then pick up that kick uh that kill and climb your way back from there because of, as of right now if they go up in the head v head or head to head 5v5 team fight it's going to be so hard for them to actually win that well to to put things in perspective texas has done a great job of warding up and staying together at yeah, least in a group brilliant. of three if not four and they've been able to prevent i believe like i said the only time where they were a like vulnerable to an engage they did a great job evading uh and chained to crystal arrow the cocoon and the tidal wave uh around the mid lane and then turned around and won that fight right so the numbers advantage was gone they took a fight under tower and they won it and so with that they've taken a commanding 5k lead and it's just very difficult for george mason now to win a fight if they don't have pressure in the side lanes and don't get a pick there's a nice stun on the rail gun Ooh. long range stun coming out of ion forcing the flash backwards not a lot of damage going down firefly not able to get in as well and texas plays this one perfectly yeah texas was able to get out and even after their 80 carry was stunned up yes he did use his to get away he also used that heal but if you're gmu you know you're not really going to get a better chance than that chance of crystal arrow right onto the virus oh, down double, by double spells trouble Nami not going to be able to do much else after that. Ion again. Buy is lonesome. Ion, no, you don't. He gets taken down. Long range collateral damage, cleaning it up. Vincent going legendary. 8 0 oh, 2. Two members down, and it looks like they're going to turn to the top lane. Baron not up just yet. It's only been 19 minutes in the game so far. And that is just such a dominating lead for UT Austin. Especially because at this point, they're going to be able to take the top lane turret as well. I mean, Shen is going to respawn and has an ultimate up, but I doubt that GMU is even going to try and defend this. Or at the very least, a Nami and a Nash are not going to be enough to defend the turret, as Vincent will simply tear through it, and there was such a big wave. So honestly, besides that first blunder we saw, Degon, very early into the game from the Longhorns, their macro game has been very strong from then on. It's very strong indeed, and it's led to a pretty significant gold lead right now and closing down the options here for george mason their their team comp is pretty one-dimensional picks are still picks but you know if you if you need to use the numbers advantage there's only so many picks you can get at once and right now down six kills and a decent amount of gold it seems like it's going to be a struggle for them to find the correct pick to get themselves back in this game another thing that's kind of uh in the longhorns favor is the fact that the itemization and the damage coming from GMU's composition is, you know, it's essentially all AP. Traditionally, Ash, yeah, she can do a lot of damage that's AD focused, but she's generally more a utility champion, and she's not doing enough damage at this point in the game to be compensating for the fact that they have so much ability power based damage. So when you see the Varus building Merc Treads, three Merc Treads on the uh, opposite squad, as well as a Legion already completed, and then just so many more ar armor, excuse me, uh, magic resist items, I should say, on the side of UT Longhorns. You know, it's it's a tough proposition 20 minutes into the game, Degon. This is not the kind of vantage you want to find yourself at. Although that being said, a play around the Baron and a misstep by the Longhorns could be what GMU needs to come back in this. Oh, here goes Enchanted Crystal Arrow, lands on a rail gun. He doesn't have flash because he used it last fight and down he goes. Teleport coming in by Nautilus. Will be on the back side. Route not able to get in. Firefly getting taken away. Blown out immediately. Kondo, not sure where you're going, brother. He goes down 50 shades of Kappa. Kappa, Kappa, Kappa. Kappa, Kappa, Kappa. It's another kill and another team fight win for the side of University of Texas. Honestly, at this point, if Railgun dies like that, that's exactly what is fate. A winning fight for UT Austin. Two members down from GNU, and again, they had, like, what's a perfect engage on the enemy 80 carry, but he's simply not the relevant carry at this point, as there's an 8-0-3 Graves, and that is the inhib going down 
and a 9,000 gold lead. Oh boy. Yeah, just no way in for the team comps. No way in for Route to get his damage down. And even then, it's a little bit gimped. One in three does have decent farm out farming the uh, opposite mid laner primate. But really just a struggle for them to get their damage in there. You Who saw Kondo look all alone. Right. There's, there's no one to kill this comp. You saw what happens if Rail. Like, they need to catch Vincent out instantly and then somehow burst through his natural tankiness and the maw and the potential edge of night active right. and the fact that he has merc tread so he has increased tenacity and the uh, fact that he's going to be shooting at you if they get through all of that and, and pick off the graves like they picked off the varus jim you might be able to come back here you know poor varus i bet karma is going to be inspiring or defiancing the team but keeping vincent alive mostly using redemption on vincent railgun's just like yeah press r take the damage go down oh and three but still winning scoreboard yeah that's, that's all that matters right the w uh traditionally the 80 carries i've known you know you don't want to find yourself in a position like this, where the rest of your team is lifting you so to speak but that being said He's still providing utility. If they go up to Siege, they're still going to be able to get some damage down with the virus cues, so it's not like he's, you know, completely out of the game. Just taking a different role. Oh, there it is. There's the top. It's going to be a nice arrow chain CC. Vincent can't move for seconds. It's still is able to get his ultimate off. Railgun getting caught out in the mid lane. In a little bit of trouble. Nice play oh. there. Corrupted chain's not going to work. Flash forward. Route tries to get it. Does get it. Primate joining the fight. There's the death ray. So it does get countered back two for one so far, but that's the pick you're talking about. And how much did it take to finally take down Vincent? It took so long. It looked like he was crowd controlled for four or five seconds and he almost did enough damage to retaliate. Now, meanwhile, Shades of Kappa and Ion are fighting in this bottom lane and Ion is forced to wait. So the three without an AD carry of UT Austin felt confident enough to siege that turret for a little bit. And the thing is, Egon, even with those picks, not only did they get the pick onto the graves, they also picked the virus up one more time for good measure. Uh, there was no objective taken, so in reality, what did GMU really gain? Right. It's the Cloud9 thought process. Kill something, what can we get? And it's 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 nothing. We can get shoved in on the top lane, shoved in in yeah. the bot lane, and lose our mid laner. Like the fact that they lost route for it too. Yes, they get the shutdown gold onto the graves, and, that, and that's all well and good, so they come back a little bit in terms of the economy, but they're still facing a deficit of two fire drakes, and you see a little hang down there, LeBlanc using his ultimate to try and dissuade or maybe even chase the Nautilus, but right now, Ball is still firmly in the Longhorn's court. And look at these wards, wards all over the bottom side of the map for UT Austin, and with that, they see the Ash on the bottom lane, they had vision of LeBlanc in the blue buff area and now it looks like pies on george mason's face actually ut austin's gonna stay there's a little bit of a possibility of a steal at 2000 health and it does really look like risky. ut austin's gonna back off arrow coming by arrow stepped by and ut austin's gonna peel off did take a little bit of chip damage there of the <laughs> bubble out of nami does get some decent damage onto vincent but it doesn't look like the rest of George Mason is ready to engage. It seemed like a pretty good opportunity that they're not going to be able to follow up. Probably, probably too low to try and make a Baron play happen. It's interesting that the Longhorns tried to go for that plane, and 50 Shades of Kappa didn't have his teleport available, so he wasn't actually there to tank the Baron, and you saw they weren't able to take it down fast enough just yet. Whoa! Okay. Flash is, flash. flash is blown, Firefly goes over the wall to try to catch Primate, wasn't able to, Primate blows his flash as well, and that's just been the story of this match so far for 26 minutes and however many uh, pause minutes we had to wait for this one. <laughs> uh, it's been George Mason unable to find a catch, or if they found a catch, not able to capitalize after the catch. And I, well, I want to go back to that mid lane catch there with Route and Railgun. Mm -hmm. A LeBlanc was not able to assassinate a Varus, 23 minutes into a game. Like, let's think about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rail got us, you know, probably a little bit happy about that considering just talking about how he doesn't have much agency in this game. Route definitely doesn't have enough damage to one-shot 
any squishy, no matter how vulnerable, on the side of uh, UT Austin. And that is certainly a problem for a team that needs to come back from this deficit by making picks. And we saw Firefly trade a flash there, but honestly, at this point in the game, okay, there oh, we are. Another enchanted uh, crystal right arrow there. dodged by Varus. But yes, you're talking about. Oh, I was just gonna say, at this point in the game, at least not having that flash might actually be a problem for GMU than it is a problem for UT because that means one more vulnerable member from GMU that the Longhorns can now focus on. And honestly, Degon, like, at least certainly can one shot anyone. Oh, Alex dealing with death right there. Vincent, a little bit of trouble. He's actually gonna get chained up. We'll live a little bit longer, and down he goes. So Vincent goes down. Kondo in a little bit of trouble. Flashes over the wall. Will be safe. So there's the first time we've had a pick without a kill being returned on the other end. But there's a lot of pressure going mid lane, and a lot of the wave clear on the side of George Mason. Almost down. Goodness gracious. Chain of corruption almost landing there. Railgun almost played a part in this match, but not able to. Nice play there by Route. Once again, though, it almost looked like Vincent was going to survive. That really awkward situation where he jumped into the enemy jungle without vision. Uh, but the redemption heal was almost in time to heal him up and he was so naturally tanky. Ooh. Holy moly. Lazy recalls lose games, except yeah. if you're UT Primate, barely able to get away from the enchanted crystal arrow. Either lazy or incredibly calculated. <laughs> Either way, a bit of a risk, I would say, when you have this kind of an advantage, but they don't pay for it. In fact, now that that arrow's gone, that dragon is going to be essentially for free if we do see UT Austin go for it. They could go for it. Mason's trying to clear out vision here on the top side of the map, but there's just so many wards down right now all over the place for UT Austin on the top side. You're right. They're going to take it for free. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Going to be another infernal. Mm. Just kidding. It's ocean. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the graphing in the top left. The graphic through me. <laughs> so not only does Vincent now have, or he's had Merc trades, but he also has the QSS. Just in case he didn't have enough tenacity, you know, in case he gets stunned or taunted or <laughs> snared. Yeah, that's oh boy. Or popped Team up. You, like the couple of crowd control abilities that they have now are even because the primary member they want to land that crowd is going to be so reduced in its effectiveness. Again, I, I think the way that UT loses this, UT Austin loses, if, is if they make a Baron play and it goes very poorly. Like right now, their best option would simply be to group up in the mid lane and just take the inhib because I don't really think there's a conceivable way that GMU could contest. I agree. That sounds that sounds about right. It, it, Nautilus was in the bottom lane, just kind of split pushing, get the wave to push. Now Victor's in the top lane pushing. So Austin trying to get the lanes pushing so that once they go in the mid lane and force down that open inhibitor, there'll be a little bit of sense of urgency on the side of George Mason. Oof, those arrows doing a lot of damage. Yeah, Railgun. You know, might not have the uh, hottest score line, but he's still doing so much damage with that lethality virus. He did take a short deviation building the uh, Manamune first, not yeah, going completing it all edge the way. Of the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not going edge of the night first, so it's a bit a odd bit considering a... it's not completely stacked either. I don't really get like high value effectiveness out of it. Eh. Oh well. I don't think it's really going to be a make or break situation for UT Austin though. No, not not really. But 31 minutes into the game, about 31 minutes into the game. 13 to 8 is your score. UT Austin up on number 7, UT Austin up on number 15, George Mason route. Ooh, getting a little aggressive. Elise is a little bit out of place, and UT Austin knows it because of the wards that are down. Firefly trying to come from behind. Gets caught out by the chain of corruption. Will he go down? Flashes over the wall. He is safe. Great play by Ione to keep his jungler alive. Great mimic. Stops the ulti there from 50 shades of Kappa, but it doesn't matter. They're gonna be able to go ahead and take the inhibitor. Taunt missing from Ion, and now he's in a little bit of trouble. Dredge line gonna land, flash backwards by Ion. Gonna keep him alive. Redemption coming down as well. Primate trying to pop up. Condo very low. 
forces out the Stan United, but isn't using it. He runs away. And a lot of positioning and trading going back and forth. Not too much damage. Look at 50 Shades of Kappa. His bar is full. And will be able to just waltz his way on out of that one. Firefly not going to land the cocoon. And just after a lot of abilities and skills and damage traded, it's just an inhibitor going down. Yeah, it's surprising that no one went down there. Condo was so low, but the focus not really that great from either side. Before the inhib went down, it was a really good tidal wave from the Nami to disengage the fight. And uh, I guess thankfully for GMU, no one went down there because test the Baron, but they did lose the inhib. Pretty big wave is pushing in this bottom lane though against QT Austin. So the longer we see GMU distract their five champions, the better. And that being said though, Nautilus has teleport available, so he's likely just gonna recall that. Seems like after taking the inhib, we will see a small moment of parity. I, I do want to commend, it's been a 7k gold lead for quite some time here for George Mason. They've stalled this one out. They are slowly bleeding out because it was 5k for a little while. It's 7k now, but it's been 7k for about almost eight, nine minutes. They're getting gold. They're getting items. Maybe LeBlanc will be able to blow someone up. Ash is going to continue to get bigger and better, but um, Ash is pretty far away from the next item, whatever that may be, if it's Infinity Edge or a, a, uh, a health, uh, a life steal item. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but either way, it's giving them an opportunity to scale up and get items and try to just pick someone even faster. Vincent, we've seen it. Vincent has withstood CC after CC after yeah. CC. But <laughs> maybe with items, Mason will be able to blow him up faster and transition that advantage into something else. Hopefully. I mean, to play uh, to play devil's advocate to your optimism for Gene, the late game scaling of UT Austin is definitely better <laughs> like i i don't even want to say questionably better debate here than the late game scaling from the uh red side from gmu so the fact that they've kept this goal lead the same or, or their goal differential similar is a good sign because it means they can get to that 66 item point but the fact that at that 66 item point they are still at a deficit doesn't bode too well now, that being said, LeBlanc certainly, as she gets more items, has more one-shot potential. And that could be the key oh. here. But another arrow wide. Man, that is so unfortunate. It's crippling to George Mason's gameplay, the way they want to play this matchup. Nice dodge there. So both AD carries miss their CC, but with no super hard engage to get in there, that's yeah. going to be the top inhibitor, and George Mason has no answer. You have the Shen Flash Taunt if he gets to range or the Taunt Flash, however you want to sequence it. But really, especially when you're this far behind, the Enchanted Crystal Arrow is the best form of engage and crowd control that GMU has. So to see that go wide nearly every single time we've seen it in the last 15 to 20 minutes, honestly, when's the last time you, you've seen one that's actually converted into anything meaningful? It's been quite a while, Degon, and now Baron has been started. They know that they're doing it, but it might just go down without the test. We'll see. It might go down, but Route's in there. Route's very close. Alex is close. There is a pop-up, but it is picked up by Vincent. How could it not? Route in a little bit of trouble. Very low. Vincent wants to go over the wall. See if collateral damage is enough. He missed. Ooh. And Jess it looks like wide. Railgun and Kondo is rubbing off on Vincent a little bit as well. <laughs> I don't know if we should credit <laughs> Vincent that low. He's had a pretty good game, so... And he did technically hit the Shen. But, yes, uh, he did hit the Shen. He did hit the Shen. 18 3. But yeah, that, I mean, that would have been awesome. Or uh, I should say, that would have been awesome for GMU had they gotten the Baron. It was a bit of a Hail Mary play. Actually, a little bit risky since it was kind of a 50 50 smite. Although Vincent does have a significant level advantage over the Elise that they started that and completed that without completely uh, just winning a team fight straight up, but they don't even need it. They lose Victor, but that's not a big deal. Now they can just group up in the bottom lane and four members of the team still have that Baron buff and will fight some time. Mid lane inhib is going to respawn soon as well, so if they'd like to, that is an open lane and should be pretty easy once again. And Longhorns in firm control of the game. It's only a matter of actually closing it out now. A little bit of 
lag coming in. This is crazy that this has happened so many times. I've never seen this happen, and I'm sure it's very difficult for players on both teams to continue to try and deal with it. Yeah, unfortunately, for what's been a pretty interesting game, we did have some rough, rough patches and are still dealing with them. Thankfully, nothing as rough as we had earlier, but speaking of rough, this Siege... Gonzalez. The Siege is a little bit rough. Route trying to get in, very low, going to go ahead and use Sonya's. Uh, Enchanted Crystal Arrow didn't lead to any kills, and Perfect picks up the kill onto Route. Down goes Alex. They're having sushi tonight down in Texas because George Mason is falling and Texas is walking all over him. The Longhorns getting in. Ion in a little bit of trouble, trying to lead him around the map. Does not, and that's going to be four members down. The GGs come out, and it's just a matter of time before University of Texas goes up one to zero against George Mason. A dominant victory. Mason found one early... But since that early game, it has been entirely the show of the Longhorns. A 38-minute game, D God, and you gotta wonder, you know, UT Austin had such a strong showing. The first adjustments you would expect out of GMU are probably gonna happen in that pick and ban phase. Yeah, there were about three to four jungle bans, I believe, and it looks like there's gonna be five, if not six. Graves gonna be one of them. Vincent dominated this game firefly the highest rated player for george mason was not able to put his imprints on this game and it showed all over the map so solid stuff there from university of texas george mason gonna have to pick up the pieces and make this a series they do have another opportunity best of three here in the first elite eight in all of you law but when we come back we'll have game two between university of texas austin up 1-0 against George Mason University. We'll be right back. Don't touch that browser. Only $14.99. Don't miss the call. Download Band. Communication made easy. Ben, Sam, and Ken are on separate journeys to defeat the menacing vile dragon. Well, let's just say luck isn't on their side. If only there was a way for them to find each other and band together. Well, that's why there's Band. It's a mobile app that allows people to come together using common interests. With Band, you can find fellow gamers, chat, schedule gaming sessions, and conduct polls. Stage epic battles with friends while sharing videos and photos along the way. So try Band today. Band. Be together. 